There are some clear expectations for discussions in the School of Business classes. These are guidelines on how we will conduct ourselves as related to discussions. We form a subculture merely by existing. How we conduct ourselves while in our classes will solidify our group norms. Norms are rules. Rules which govern the individual behaviors of members of social, professional, and personal groups. Some norms evolve. Some are established. Some are formal. Others are informal. The following norms are going to be both formal and established by the School of Business professors. The School of Business subculture exists within a larger society. A society that some have found has an unpleasant and unacceptable current running through it. A current that will stop at the door of our classrooms. The door will be closed, locked, and bolted. What we're going to leave stranded outside our door is something referred to as the culture of mean. Since the culture of mean represents something that is forbidden in school, let me define it for you. Reality shows like Real Housewives and Jersey Shore show friends, at least they say they're friends, communicating through shouting, interrupting, finger-pointing, sarcasm, and name-calling using antagonistic, aggressive, argumentative postures and tones. Pretty scary, and I'm sure that you can come up with further examples. And just in case you need a few more examples, in popular shows like Toddlers and Tierras, yeah, that's a real show, and Dance Moms, Anyway, mothers are depicted as these cutthroat, conniving, competitive shrews who set tantrums and peevishness are the purview of toddlers. It's a pretty sad state of affairs when the two-year-olds are more even-tempered and mature than the parents. Well, there will be none of that behavior here. And it's just not TV programming. Politics is fraught with hostile attacks, derisive behavior, and demeanor and mocking messages removing all semblances of civil discourse and statesmanship. Radio and TV news programs and talk shows are filled with barking and shrieking and shouting. Everyone is waiting for their turn to deliver a loud, abrasive opinions rather than respectfully listening to others or having lively, intelligent conversation. They engage in acrimonious and asynchronous monologues rather than an intelligent, meaningful discussion. Look around you and listen to the media messages, and mean seems to be the medium. No respect, no courtesy, no civility. This would legitimize a form of communication that blasts at people rather than encourages a polite exchange of ideas, opinions, and points of view. It mainstreams what should be aberrant behavior. Well, we'll have none of that here. Welcome to Edgewood College, where dialogue, discourse, and discussion will be encouraged and civility and a respectful exchange of thoughts and ideas and opinions will be expected and strictly enforced. See that clicker in the professor's hand? Think of it as a wand. You open the door even a crack to the culture of mean and your professor is going to zap it shut. I know you'll be more fruitful in our discussions and I know the experience will be enhanced from our culture of civil discourse. The norm here is for diplomatic disagreement, for politely persuasive argumentation, and for courteous communication. I know it will create a better environment for learning. The learning environment I'm talking about here at Edgewood College is really grounded in our learning objectives, one of which is to have open, vibrant discussions with a diverse group possessing different points of view through an understanding of the behavioral expectations of respectful discourse. Let me define that for you. In the next two slides you'll see this div civil discourse defined. They're from a presentation prepared by Don Shute for 2007 Edgewood College Dialogue for Democracy event. It explains the different perspectives related to debate and dialogue. In the School of Business, the expectation is that we are going to be engaged in dialogue. Debate. It's rather egocentric when you look at all the elements of debate. It also can be very negative, cause a lot of conflict, cause a lot of consternation, cause a lot of friction. 
And it's very difficult sometimes to get over that, to get beyond that, to get through that to the core of what the discussion is all about. We're going to avoid debate whenever possible. And in order to avoid it, let's look at what it means to debate. First of all, assuming that there is only a right answer, your answer is combative. It attempts to prove the other side is wrong. It's listening only to find flaws and then to make counter-arguments. It's defending assumptions and opinions and thoughts and ideas as truth. It's critiquing the other side's position rather than taking a position of your own. It's defending one's own ideas against those of others maybe thinking that they are more important, that they are better articulated. They're searching for flaws and weaknesses in the positions of others and seeking out conclusions or votes that ratifies your position. As we're going to see, dialogue is significantly different and will create a much more positive forum. Dialogue, as you can see, is actually quite different. It's much more a positive activity. It's a more pleasant activity, actually. It's based on the following assumptions. First of all, assuming that many people have pieces of the answer and that together they can craft a solution. As Kenneth Blanchard said, no one of us is as smart as all of us and we all have pieces of the truth. It's collaborative. Participants work together toward a common understanding. It's listening to understanding, to find meaning, and to look for and seek areas of agreement. It's revealing assumptions for re-evaluation. It's re-examining all people's positions and ideas and thoughts. And it's admitting that the thinking of others can improve our own. It's searching for strengths and values in others' positions and discovering new options, not just seeking closure, you can see where this really contributes to the continuing, ongoing, and very civil dialogue, discourse, and discussion. And it's going to be the expectation for us at Edgewood College. Oh yes, there's something in it for each and every one of you. Learn from, the, learn from and understand other people's points of view and grow more knowledgeable through intelligent conversation. You already know what you know, and in order to grow and expand your own expertise, listen to what other people have to say. Capture, discover, and uncover their own points of view, their opinions, their expertise, their experiences, their ideas, their thoughts. It really helps make you smarter. Inherent influence through empowering others, and listening when you respectfully attend to what someone else says, empowers them. It makes them feel important. Have people listen respectfully to your thoughts and ideas and opinions. When you give other people the respect and opportunity to express themselves, hopefully they'll learn from your example and afford you the same opportunity. It enhances reputation for diplomacy and meaningful interaction, always a good thing when preparing for leadership. It helps you project a mature, confident, professional demeanor. All these things will really help and enhance not only your reputation, but other people's perceptions of whether or not you're ready for leadership. Keep the door open to all of these possibilities through respectful delivery and thoughtful, intelligent discussion. The School of Business courses give you multiple opportunities to practice and develop skills in meaningful and robust discourse. Step up and seize the opportunity. Hone your skills. It's a great habit to get into. In the 21st century, leadership is going to be more about influence than authority, more about action and behavior and demeanor than it is about a position and power. Adopt a confident, courteous demeanor. You'll be setting the example. You'll be facilitating the dialogue of others, and by doing so, you'll be able to enforce and encourage this culture of civil discourse. Good luck, and as a member of the Edgewood College Learning Community, I thank you.